Hey everyone, Charlie Murphy here from the Atomic Age for another Nuclear Engineer Reacts video. Today we're looking at the movie Peacemaker starring George Clooney and Nicole Kidman, and it involves a rogue Russian general stealing some nukes from a Soviet intercontinental ballistic missile. And George Clooney and Nicole Kidman have to track him down before someone can blow one of the nukes up, so let's get into it. Oh, now they're hooking up the trains to transfer the warheads over here. Oh man. Where's their safety factor? Where's their analysis? Would such a thing already exist? I guess so, maybe at like a train yard? I'm like, did someone have to design this warhead transfer mechanism? I love how the train has the red cockpit, like to make it look evil. <laughs> so now they're gonna hide out in this tunnel when the bomb goes off. And they'll be very protected. The Earth is very good at shielding radiation. Now were they planning for the bomb train to hit this other train? I watched this movie once before now, to get familiar with it, and uh, that part didn't make sense to me. I don't think they were. <laughs> I just jumped out of the train. I want to tell anyone else to like somehow jump out of the train. As you've noticed, no nukes have gone off yet. That's because their safeguards are working. Uh, for nuclear warhead to go off, you have to have a very precise order of uh, deliberate events. Nucle nuclear wards are very carefully designed to not go off accidentally. Wouldn't it be funny if they just held on that timer for the whole time until it clocked until it counted down? Nope, oh, and they just got blown away. So there's satellites in orbits to detect nuclear explosions going off. Jeez. It's about 20, 20 to 30 times larger than Hiroshima. Immediately after the bomb goes off, there's a lot of short-lived isotopes. That is, they decay away quickly. They give off a lot of very deadly, high-intensity radiation. But those go away in a few days, and then uh, people will then be able to like approach the, the crash site. It doesn't stay radioactive forever. <laughs> Seem pre seems pretty plausible to me. Get away from the scary nuclear stuff. <laughs> oh, George Clooney can't turn that guy dirty, you know, no one can. And will render a nuclear yield of one to two kilotons. So these are fusion bombs they're dealing with. So what they just pulled out was the fission primary. So. If you know, a fission bomb is tends to be smaller than a fusion bomb in terms of blast, or it always is. So you, for a fusion bomb to work, you actually use a fission bomb to start the fusion bomb. It seems kind of, uh, I don't know, it seems kind of clunky when you think about it for a second, but that's how you do it. You need a fission bomb to start a fusion bomb because you have to get those insanely high temperatures and pressures in order to force hydrogen to fuse with itself. I also forgot to mention, the smaller fission bomb that can yield one to two kilotons is the primary, and the thing that makes the fusion bomb is called the secondary. But once you take the primary out, you have nothing anymore. You cannot get any kind of nuclear bomb without the primary, so they basically have destroyed this warhead to give the the uh, the Serbian guy his uh, his primary. No, no. You don't need to be a nuclear engineer to say that thing's not just going to come sliding easily out. <laughs> Initial blast would throw 60 rads of prompt radiation out to three miles. That's most of the lower Manhattan. So with that, he's talking about the prompt neutrons that are made at the moment of detonation, and 60 rads is the dose, which is a lot. Three miles. Well, we we have our, our nuke map website to try and uh, counter some of these guys here. Look at this map. They got like 85% survival all the way up to the lake here in Central Park. Let's plot this. All right, so here at nukemap.com, we've come to New York City. We got our detonation site right here at the UN. We're gonna enter the max yield of two kilotons that they said. We're gonna use surface burst. All right, casualties. Let's see what happens if we do that. Detonate. They're estimating 56,000 fatalities, 100,000 injuries. Okay, so we have a fireball out to here. We got heavy blast damage, 20 psi pressure out to here. Moderate blast, 5 psi out to here. Thermal radiation radius, this is the radius of third degree burns. 100% probability for third degree burns out to this distance. 
Then we got the radiation radius, so that's like the 60 rads of a... Uh, oh, never mind. That's 500 rem ionizing radiation dose. And then out to here is where glass windows will break. So on their map, they were showing 85% fatality all the way out to Central Park. Nuke map would say... Well, out, all the way out to this lake in Central Park. Nuke map says nowhere near that. You're expecting fatalities just in this region here, really. A lot of it's being actually wasted on the river. I actually want to do it like further here into the city. And again, it's remembering that this is just a guide, but it's baselined with some kind of uh, nuclear test results. Whereas here, they're just kind of throwing everything. This is more what I would expect from like the full bomb. Like the full bomb that they are, that the, uh, this thing should carry. So let's do that one. All right, so as they said in the movie, and as I verified on Wikipedia, the, but the missile that this warhead came from is uh, from an SS-18, and it has a 550 to 750 kiloton yield, as noted here. But let's go ahead and redo this with, uh, let's just take the average, 650 kilotons detonate. See, look, here you go, here you go. So we got moderate blast damage out to here, right? This is the moderate. Okay, heavy blast damage is out to here. Radiation here, moderate blast damage here. Most residential buildings collapse, injuries are universal, fatalities widespread. So what they're showing on this map is really for like the uh one of the fully functioning fusion warheads, not for the fission primary. So that's a that's an interesting little slip up by them. But it's very consistent here. But of course, you know, if if it were coming from this is also I just did surface burst. We should do this again for air burst, because it would be an air burst for that that warhead so here for the airburst you would get a, a larger range of damage but less you wouldn't get as much of like the uh some of the heavy damage down there near the ground it would just be a, a further range of moderate damage but yeah so they, they it looks like they've kind of done this for like a ground burst of the the, the full icbm warhead I guess it would be leaking radiation. Like, are they assuming that like damage was done to it when the bomb was dismantled? I'm not sure why it would inherently leak radiation. Maybe if it's a uh, if the fission's got like a, a tritium boost, if the the fission primary has like a tritium booster in it. Uh, tritium is a type of hydrogen, and it, it's in a gaseous form, and uh, the smaller the atom of your gas, and hydrogen's the smallest atom. Tritium in this case, uh, it tends to leak through things very easily, so maybe they're trying to detect tritium. I don't know. If you know, comment below. Oh, here's the radiation sniffer. That's a cool concept. They could sniff the radiation, but you wouldn't get much precision other than this general area. Not very helpful in a big city. You said before that it has a sensitivity of three to four blocks. I can't tell which way he's going. Unless they're just looking at him at this point. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I guess it's useful to let them know it's still like in the same area, but you're not going to get any more precision than that. So Nest is like nuclear bomb disposal team. I want to know more about Nest. I've not heard much about them, but that sounds like an incredibly intense job. Will it help contain the radiation? I don't know. It's still inside a building. <laughs> There's the core of the plutonium primary. These are like highly machined little explosive panels. They have to be super precise because you know, typically when... Okay, so let's back up. This is a plutonium implosion type. There's a hollow core, hollow sphere of plutonium in there. Make a fission bomb, you want to squeeze that all in super quickly. And to do that, you have to use conventional high explosives outside of it. When you blow something up, it, want, it makes like a circular, outwardly proceeding shockwave, right? So you need to design this so that the shockwaves actually you know, all focus inwards and compress. So you do that with varying densities of explosive, and it, as the shockwave progresses, it bends into a concave shape as opposed to being a convex shape. So by just Messing up one of these little panels, you won't get the proper bomb you're supposed to get. But let's uh let's let the movie progress a little bit here. 
You blow up the bomb, and you know what you're doing, right? You've done something like this before. <laughs> so she's just trying to mess it up, and any any kind of mess up will inhibit the bomb. It's just the question of the of the degree to how much it's messed up. All right, so they just knocked off like I guess there's like a metal outer panel, and you can see like they probably just used like clay there, but that's the explosive in there. Now they kind of just messed it a little bit. I'm not a bomb person, I don't know, but I imagine just messing up that little bit would be enough to make it not go nuclear. But if they mess it up just a teeny bit, like less than that, it would probably be a fizzle, which is when you still get a nuclear bomb but a lower yield than you were expecting. So if they want two kilotons, maybe you get half a kiloton. That's called a fizzle. F-I-Z-Z-L-E. And bam! And oh my god. Well, it worked. It didn't go nuclear, but holy crap, they're like covered in plutonium now. <laughs> They'd probably be dead. The amount of high explosives that's there, they'd probably be dead. They're horribly contaminated with plutonium right now. It's not, not a, not a bright outlook for their future. Hey, look, there's the hazmat crews, and they got the right idea. No, don't take your helmet off. Don't take your your mask off. No, don't wrap them. You got, they gotta wash that plutonium off. Where are the showers? Can't just wrap them up. Oh, look at all these civilians just standing by. Like, get everyone out of here. Get them out. You gotta decontaminate the area. Yeah, so if it doesn't go nuclear, it's still gonna, like, mess up that plutonium core, and there's gonna be plutonium debris everywhere. Obviously, don't wanna breathe that in. Alright, guys, so that was The Peacemaker. Honestly, it's an alright movie. I think it's kind of forgettable. Um, yeah, just, like... If you've seen the movie, the part where he starts beating up the transportation guy, like, that's when I was like, okay, it's gonna be this kind of movie. Um, but yeah, not a, not a, not great, not terrible, just like Diatlov said. So, thank you guys for watching. Got any more questions or comments, let me know in the comments below. It's Charlie Murphy from the Atomic Age, signing off.